Um, hi, I'm Mano Marks, and I'm going to um, first apologize for something. I have very little visual skills, so I'm watching the, the slides of the, the talks before me, and I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty awesome, and I don't think I have a GIF in here. Uh, not, a, not an animated one, and I'm, of course, old enough to remember when GIFs were just an image format. So um, <laughs> anyway, hi. Just uh, I, I don't think a lot of you know me, so just uh, my quick anecdote to, well, some of you do. Uh, <laughs> um, I was at uh, Google for nine years, and two years ago I was in uh, London helping Mandy White uh, prepare a video. She's on the, uh, on the Google Cloud team. And uh, she mentioned this thing in, uh, called Docker, and I stopped her and I said, well, you might want to explain what that is because I don't, I don't really know. And Mandy, in her very British accent, which I will not really attempt to do, said, everyone knows what Docker is. <laughs> so I said, oh, I think I better start learning about this. Uh, fast forward to six months ago, and I'm uh, now uh, heading up the developer relations at Docker. So. Anyway, that's my introduction to a lot of, uh, a lot of people here. Uh, so today I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Um, this is a, a little bit of an overview. If you've been following Docker, you've probably seen a little bit of this. You may know that this week we released Docker 1.11. Um, and we, we name our big releases by the engine version. But that includes different versions of uh, Compose, Swarm, all the different tools. Um, and also, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the, the beta that we have now also for uh, Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows. So uh, I'm going to go through a couple of those things. And uh, let's start with 111. So 111 is the first OCI compatible runtime for the industry. And we're really excited by this. This, uh, this means a number of things. We've restructured the engine so that it, uh, it now uses container D and run C directly. So it uses container D, which then uses run C to run uh, containers. And this is very exciting because, of course, um, less than a year ago, we, uh, we helped found OCI to, uh, to in part, to give, to give standards to the community, but also to help find ways to get some of this plumbing technology out there. Uh, and part of the community, giving it all to the community. So now we have uh, Container D and Run C as uh, both open source projects we've given away, and also things that are now uh, directly used within Docker Engine, which in the future should give us a lot of flexibility in the kinds of things that we can do with Engine, including different kinds of containers and, and a variety of things. And also, since we wrote Container D and Run C, we know really how to work with them and how, uh, how they will work with, uh, with Docker Engine and with containers. So we're, we're very excited about that and that piece of, uh, of 111. And um, there, the 111 itself is not hugely feature rich, be, largely because this was the big focus. We really wanted to get this piece done and also uh, to get the community taking a look at it and seeing how it can actually be used. OK, so I wanted to just highlight a few of the other uh, kinds of things. There's a, there's a few, more, uh, few more features in there. We now have this uh, uh, load balancing. It's a, it's a basic DNS round robin load balancing built into, uh, into Swarm. And we have these uh, IPv6 uh, service uh, discovery is now built into um, engine networking. So these are uh, some of these features that people have been asking for for a long time. We're starting to, to bring these features in. Of course, we're going to make uh, things better as we're going along. And also, particularly in Swarm, the, the container rescheduling is no longer in experimental. That's a really big uh, feature for us, and we think for uh, orchestration, which we all know is a fraught topic as to what orchestration is because of the last talk. Um, but uh, the Swarm uh, rescheduling is a, is a really big piece and really, I think, will be helpful for those people who are trying to use Swarm in production. And then uh, another highlight is that we brought in uh, a Microsoft uh, um, Azure driver into Docker Machine to just make it a lot easier to use Machine with Azure. 
So uh, we've been really, as many of you know, working very closely with Microsoft on, uh, on a lot of issues, and this is one of the things that, uh, that they helped us with. <laughs> All right. I, love, I haven't used a clicker in a while. Okay, so now on to kind of the big thing. This is the thing that everybody really um, asked me about, and I'm going to say if anybody's in the room and they want to get into the beta, uh, come up to me later and I'll give you my card. You can send me your Hub ID. We'll figure that. I'm just getting that one out of the way right now. <laughs> so it's not asked, uh, asked later. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Docker for Mac and Windows. We, wanted, we were taking a look. A lot of people have had a lot of issues with, uh, with VirtualBox and with, our, uh, with you know, some of the little ways in which we've been running the, the hypervisors on uh, Mac and Windows, and we wanted to bring in a more, much more native experience. We wanted to bring in an experience to you that, that, that worked with your development environments and also your deployment environments so that we could bring to you this, this uh, higher performance um, more easy to use experience and uh, do things like, you know, improve your battery life, uh, better use your, di your uh, disk usage better, and also to uh, enable much faster development. So um, what we did is we built these native, uh, much more native applications. So you, when you go to install this, uh, this beta, um, you'll install it with, you know, a standard, um, standard installers for the different platforms. And you won't need Toolbox anymore. It's not that all the tools in Toolbox will no longer be useful. And I'm going to put this out there because a lot of people think Docker Machine is solely so that you can run Docker on, on Windows or on Mac. But in fact, Docker Machine has a lot of usage for uh, for deploying your apps onto different uh, different clouds or different machines, so that that will no longer be required though, just to set up a development environment. So there's no more uh, Docker machine eng defaults to get your uh, your virtual machines. You don't have to create a virtual box. This is all taken care of for you, and it's done that way by using the native capabilities of the platform. So both. Um, Apple and Microsoft have built into their operating systems native hypervisor support. So XHive on, uh, on Mac and uh, Hyper-V into Windows. And these are really exciting technologies, and so we work with both Apple and Microsoft to make sure that we could deliver a really great hypervisor experience uh, directly in, uh, in a native environment on, uh, on Mac and Windows. And so what it'll do is we'll create actually a very thin, very lightweight Linux uh, virtual machine under these hypervisors, and you can then use that. But the app takes care of managing all of that, so you don't have to deal with that yourself. If you really want to go down the, the machine route, you can, and you can still take advantage of those uh, of different kinds of virtual machines if that's what you want to run it under. But we take care of all of this for... Uh, for your basic development needs, and it gives you a much faster, much easier experience. And we also provide this native networking experience. So we're, we're working to integrate directly in with the native networking stacks on the different, uh, on the different platforms. So uh, this is going to resolve all that issues when you have um, uh, when you're using Docker Machine, you have to figure out what the IP address is, if you want to do local testing, that sort of thing. And it's also going to resolve some issues that people have around, uh, around VPNs. So if you're VPNing into a, uh, into a system, you often had trouble using uh, the Docker, uh, Docker for, uh, uh, for Mac, and particularly Docker for Windows. So those were, uh, those were some of the issues. And then finally, we really wanted to solve a, uh, one piece of the kind of dependency hell matrix that you've all seen the, uh, the uh, seen all the, uh, the demos of. You've seen that uh, dependency hell uh, infographic many times. In this case, um, what we're doing 
is we're allowing you to uh, use basically what uh, on Linux is called iNotify. So you're taking advantage of the local file system simply notifying the app when something has changed. Uh, so if you're mounting a volume and you're building an application that's built that, uh, locally, you can mount a volume and then just make changes to the app and it will automatically be reflected in, uh, in the app that's running in your container, which means you can change a text file in a text editor. You have all your development environment on, on that one particular uh, container. So you can have Node.js or Python or Java or whatever you want. You change some source files, but you don't need to have your, whole, your machine set up with this entire uh, dependency uh, system. So those are all the, the problems we're trying to solve. And also, this is a really big one. We're really wanting to allow people to take advantage of other CPU architectures. So one of the things that we've seen at Docker is that um, you know, we built on, on top of the classic x86 platform, but we want to take, uh, let people take advantage of other platforms as well. So um, we can now run uh, with the new, uh, we can now run ARM with the new uh, Docker for Mac and Windows. And of course, we're working closely with Microsoft to be able to do Windows, uh, Windows native containers as well. So this is my, this is my cute graphic, this is my attempt at graphics. This is why I don't do much, this much, right? See, those are beta symbols up at the top. Um, I thought people here would get that. Uh, but you didn't laugh, so thanks for that. Really appreciate that. Um, so <clears throat> this is a beta, beta product. And in fact, as I was sitting in the back there trying to pay attention to all the glorious slides that were coming up here, I was debugging an issue <laughs> on my laptop that came because of, a, uh, of the latest beta in the test channel that came through this morning. So I was having a little bit of networking issues. So uh, we do want to say that you know, these are the, the basic operating systems that you need. You'll need Yosemite on Mac and uh, Windows 10 Pro. And that's because th those are the, that's, you, you know, that's the lowest levels that we, we currently support. Windows, we're hoping to go further back, but that's a, that's a problem because that depends on Microsoft and how far back they want to let uh, Hyper-V go. Um, and then we're also looking at still providing a, uh, a, a virtual box kind of experience or some other kind of hypervisor experience there as well. So that's, um, that's just something to really be aware of. Those are the current limitations. We're going to expand that. Uh, as much as we can. We're really excited about, uh, about this beta. And of course, if you want to actually apply for it, I mean, putting up uh, beta.docker.com is, is how you do that. And you do, you'll need a hub ID to actually apply for that. Um, but uh, once, you, once you've signed into Docker Hub, you can apply for that and then uh, do the, uh, we'll put you on the waiting list. And right now we have a lot of people on the waiting list. So if you want to do it right now and then come up to me later, <laughs> you're welcome to do that. I wanted to give you a little bit of a demo as well because I think I've gone through this a little bit fast. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what the beta looks like. I didn't start my timer, so somebody just wave at me when I have like five minutes, then I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. Okay, so change the resolution here. I'm just gonna pump this up a little bit so you can see me. People often want me to, to demo this, and, and you know, the truth is, it's a command line, so much of the, what we've built into this is in the background, right? So you won't, uh, that's a little large, you won't be able to see, uh, you won't be able to see a lot of changes, but the big thing I want to I want to show is the first aid Docker machine. No Docker machines. This is hands free, right? And sure, I'm on. Ah, and I'm getting the uh, an update right in the middle of it. Okay. 
So <laughs> let's see if my uh, this is still running. Um, so one of the things that we've built into uh, into it is a local uh, DNS server. And run? No. Okay. Sorry. I, I got hit right in the middle of installing. But we built in a, a local DNS server, and you can now have a, you have an, a local development environment, a local namespace, um, docker.local on Mac, and just docker on Windows. We're working with uh, Microsoft to get that to be docker.local, but there's some issues they have with that. So um, that, that we find is really exciting. You no longer have to go and search for your, um, for your IP address, and it just, it just works. You build your app probably with Compose or however, whatever tools that you're going to use. You build it, you put it up, and then you can just test it locally. And you can make the changes to it locally without restarting your container, without rebuilding your container, without deploying in all that development environment that you, uh, that you normally would. So uh, that's it. Since